I'll give you a tour of my redesign dashboard as well as some helpful tips and principles if you wanna design something similar. Let's get going. Hey guys, my name is Irfan, and I'm all about taking a simplified and gentle approach to productivity. And when it comes to Notion, I think less is better in many cases. Now I watch a lot of Notion content on YouTube and I'm always inspired by people and what they're doing with their setups. But I do think that they make things a lot more complex than they have to be. And they have to use every single feature and that's great, but it doesn't always have to be that way. I wanna show that with my newly redesigned dashboard. So this is what my old dashboard looked like. As you could see, it's probably similar to maybe something that you have or what you've seen of others. I think a lot of times people have these headers like projects, areas, resources, or, or notes. They have some sort of header and then a bunch of links. People have widgets on their dashboard. So I have this one with time, so weeks, months, year. I've seen people have weather on here and that's great and all, but I thought about redesigning my dashboard and thinking about what outcome I'm trying to achieve with it. And for me, this is a lot. It jumbles up my mind and I want, I want it to be more simple and just a few areas that I really care about and I wanna focus on. Now Notion's dashboard is also my homepage on my internet browser. So when I open up Chrome, anytime I open up a new tab, it shows me my dashboard. So I really see this as a starting point and I thought about like, what does my starting point look like? Where do I wanna go when I start Notion? So this is what my newly redesigned dashboard looks like. I have a, a, a phrase that I just love, which is all about doing. And here are the five areas of my dashboard. So I have my newsletter issues, my YouTube videos. This can go under the bucket of content creation. I have my journal, which I have a weekly journal. I've been doing this for 35 weeks. It's a really simplified approach to journaling. This is sort of reflection. And then I have personal knowledge management, which I've done a video on. Really any sort of inputs, any, any learnings, anything I see on the internet gets clipped. And then finally projects. I have a couple of different projects that are active. So I'm running a half marathon. I'm trying to work on building better relationships. And then I have a trip to Portland. And that's it. That's what I want my dashboard to look like. I wanted to make it super simplified. It's kind of a a quadrant of four or five areas. And I don't need anything else. And I even contemplated thinking about maybe I should add some quick links at the top. I decided against that idea because I think the more stuff you add, the less important everything else gets. And I really wanted to focus on these five areas and, and that's it. I think 80% of my time in Notion should be spent in these areas. And if I really wanna be honest with myself, the, the content creation is the stuff that makes me the most fulfilled, the most happy when I get it done. So I wanna like nudge myself towards the content creation front. And this is why these two are at the very top of my dashboard versus the personal knowledge management, which can be procrastination and journaling, which is great, but you don't need to be journaling all the time to get that self-awareness and gratitude. So really these two areas are my top priority. The second thing that you'll notice about my dashboard here is that it's dynamic. Everything is a database. If this is my starting point when I get into Notion, I really want to use it as a way to resume where I left off. So everything here is a dashboard for a specific reason because it's specific things I'm working on. So if it's a newsletter issue, it's a YouTube video, I can go right into it. Even these headers here, if I click on them, like the YouTube video, it takes me to my videos in progress page, which is like, which something I go to often of, you know, where I stand on my content creation, what I'm writing, what I'm planning for. And it's an easy way to go right into that. Now Notion has a new feature called the side peak feature. So when you open up a item in a database, you can open up to the right side. So if I click on my weekly reflection journal, and this, these are just the highs and lows of the week, and this is a sample of it, I can quickly write something that's a high or a low for the day and, and go back automatically. So I love the new side peak feature for that ability. Now I, I keep the side peak settings on for journal and for personal knowledge management. So if I click on Eat That Frog, which is a book I'm reading, I can look at the highlights I have go back, but then for these newsletter issues and YouTube videos, I like to have them go full screen automatically. So I click on that and go right into the video I'm creating right now and go right into that script and start writing and not be distracted by anything else. And the last thing I wanna point out is the property I'm showing for these different databases. So you can see for the content creation front here, the newsletter issue, YouTube, I have a date here. And this date actually corresponds to the published date or the due date of when I want this video to go out. 
it's a little bit of accountability and I, that's the first thing I see when I open up the page, know, hey, am I progressing towards publishing this content? And then for my journal and my personal knowledge management, this property is just the last time I've updated the, the note or the journal entry. It could be so easy to be like, I'm gonna add more properties, but I told myself like one property, that's all I need to see. And then for the projects here, I just have the fire emoji. So three fire emoji means that it's a really important project. So for me, like I'm so focused on my half marathon and I really wanna make sure that I hit my goal and PR come October. So thinking about what's the number one priority for me when it comes to my personal projects. And then finally, I wanna give you guys some helpful tips if you wanna recreate something like this in your Notion workspace. So the first thing, and I think I'll probably have questions for this is how did I get this like customized cover and what's the, what, what's the dimensions? It's 1500 by 400 and you could do this easily in Canva. It's a free graphic design program, but if you go into Canva, you put in 1500 by 400, you can create a gradient background color like this and you could type in something you want or picture or image, but you don't need to use notions like stock photos or Unsplash. You could create your own customized cover. And I think that's, you know, it kind of gives you a little bit of personality if you can create your own, but it's really simple. The second thing I want to tell you guys about is actually this page is locked and I'm gonna unlock it. There's two reasons why I locked the page. One is if you get on your mobile device, it is so easy to delete things, especially if these are like original databases. And the second reason I lock the homepage here is it gives me a little bit more real estate. So you could see I have my weekly journal, but I also have a daily log that I started doing as well. And if I lock the, if I unlock this, it, it means one other one extra click in here and I have to go in here because I think the filters and sort views all pop up so it, it takes that away. So I keep this lock. I don't really look at my dashboard as a way to like change filters and stuff. If I want to do that, I can expand and go into the the dash the, the table itself. I also do full width here and I do two columns for these four areas and then one column for my projects. If I ever want to add something, I would probably put it in this quadrant here. But the two column layout works really well. It works well on mobile. So think about your mobile device. If you have an iPhone or an Android phone, remember it's gonna, uh, you're gonna scroll vertically. So for this one, it's gonna go newsletter, YouTube, journal, personal knowledge management. So I think about that as well. And I also have these toggles here. So I keep these toggles. Um, I can tuck them away or open them up. Just gives me the option. I usually have these these toggles open, but this is, these are header toggles. And the other thing I want to point out is the filters I have set up here. So I try to make sure that I leave these databases pretty compact. So for the content creation front, it's only the things that have a due date are being shown. And for personal knowledge management, I only have my inbox and my favorites. So it's only going to be a few items and I go through this pretty frequently, so it wouldn't be a huge list. And then for my weekly journal, I have a filter here that just shows this week. So any journal I've created just this week is the filter. So it's not every single week for the last, for this entire year. So that is a quick tour of my newly redesigned dashboard. Let me know in the comments below if you have a static dashboard, like my old one or something dynamic, like the new one I just created. And feel free to ask me any questions you have about this dashboard, my philosophy, or any of the settings I have set up on this. If you like this idea of simplicity, I have a video here on my weekly reflection journal, which is the highs and lows of the week. I've been doing this for what, 35 weeks now. It works amazingly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.